Hello, I'm Patrick Pickett, and I'm the conductor and the music director of the Queensland Pops Orchestra. Today I'm with Elizabeth Lewis, and as I think I might get away with calling her Elizabeth, most of the time I might have a crack at calling her Libby as well. Uh, Libby is a, a local girl and has uh, moved from a very innocent background as a music, musician and singer to now moving into the professional world. Libby, welcome. Thank you, It's great to have you here with us, and tell us about what that background's been all about. Well, as you said in your introduction, I'm from Brisbane. I'm from Bayside, Bayside down at Wynnum, and mm. uh, only child, so I have the wonderful support of both my parents, their unwavering support, which mm. I'm really grateful for. I, when I was about 10, I knew I wanted to be a singer, and then when I was 15, I decided that I wanted to be an opera singer in particular. Mm. So I spent my uh, senior years at school getting ready to go to the conservatorium, mm. and I was lucky enough to get in first time. And, Long story short, now a couple of degrees later, we're, we're a professional singer, so mm. it's, it's, it's really wonderful. Mm. And that transitional uh, phase from being a, a would-be opera singer to being a professional one, obviously it challenges beyond what normal young people would be going through. Would that, would that affect your life dramatically? Oh, it's, it's, there's no doubt that it's hard, mm. um, and it, it means that your social life is in a way the same as the friends you had when you were at school, you know, you're always practicing or you're at rehearsal or those sorts of things. But they're the things that make the performance so wonderful when you see all that hard work come to fruition. Um, but the, the transition from being a student to being a professional it is definitely a big leap. And making that leap has been really challenging and exciting and hard work and fun. So in recent year or so, you worked with the Queensland Pops Orchestra in a couple of productions. And that's a little bit different when you uh, you're an on-stage performer rather than a character player within an opera. Mm -hmm. uh, tell us about some of those uh, events and uh, and the songs you've sung for us. Mm -hmm. Well, I started with the Pops um, last year in Best of British, mm -hmm. and I'm really excited to be asked back mm -hmm. this year for Best of British. And of course, with the um, New Year's Eve gala, which was just so much fun, best New Year's Eve I've ever had. If you haven't been to a gala performance, you have to go this year. It is the best fun you will have at New Year's Eve. And I'm not just saying that. Mm -hmm. um, it, it was great fun. And I think the thing that I like with the concert performance is that you can engage with the audience mm -hmm. directly. I mean, when you're being a character performer, you're obviously engaging with the audience as part of your performance. But there's that direct connection with the audience as a, on the concert platform that means you can you can have a chat and mm. you can get to know your audience better and they can get to know you as a person as well as the performer that they see when you're, you're singing. Mm. As an individual, you sang two very different songs on that particular concert. Do you want to tell us about those? At the gala? Mm. Yes. Um, well, I sang one that I sang down in Melbourne a couple of years ago for the um, Herald Sun Aria competition mm. where I played second, which mm. was great fun. Mm. Um, I sang uh, Non Pumesta from Rossini's Cinderella, which mm. is it's a very difficult piece. I mean, mm. he's he's really mean when he wrote that because it's, it's at the very end of the opera and it's the hardest piece that she sings all night mm. and it goes right down to your boots and right up into the stratosphere. But I think that's what makes it so fun because mm. you get to really stress, stretch yourself mm. vocally mm. and emotionally, even mm. though it seems to the audience sometimes that, you know, it's just frill. There's a mm. lot of stuff happening there emotionally. Mm. Mm. And then obviously there was the, um, the Habanera, which mm. a lot of people know whether they're opera buffs or mm. not, they're very yeah. familiar with that calm and tune. And they're two very different characters. Very, very different characters, mm. complete different ends of the mm. spectrum. So you're going to continue studying and developing here in Australia mm. and now, do you want to tell us about a little bit of what that's going to be about and I think you're doing some major role study this year as well. Yes I am, I'm actually moving to Melbourne. So mm. I, I will be going down south in the cold, the little froggy that I am, have my coat. Mm. Um, I've been offered a place with the Victorian Opera and their Developing Artists Program, so mm. I'm very excited to mm. be joining that that group of singers. And mm. I will be um, covering a couple of major roles with them, mm. um, and then obviously coming back up in October to perform with the Pops, mm. which I'm really excited about. Yes, I think it's great that we're able to continue to nurture the Queensland artists. I think it's important, and the. 30th anniversary of the Pops this year, and it will be the 30th of the Best of British as well, which was the invention of Colin Harper. It's great to have you on the program. Mm -hmm. Wonderful Thank to be you. able to talk with you today. Good Thank luck in Melbourne. We'll, be, we'll miss you terribly. Oh, I'll miss being here too. Thank you very much for having me today. It's a pleasure. Good to see you. Okay.